So everything from just behind that front box back is added onto. Just how shallow will it run? I, I am extremely comfortable and confident in it. And Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And uh, I gotta say, I'm pretty excited about this video. I've, I've done a few of these uh, boat walkthroughs and stuff, but this is this is always my favorite boat to get to talk about. Um, brings a smile to my face just thinking I'm gonna get to talk about this boat. Just spent yesterday fishing in it, and uh, and it just, man, it's just, just so much fun. Um, it, it really, really is. I, I thoroughly enjoy the time that I get to spend in this boat. So what is it? Basically, the base model, it's a, Tracker 1754 Grizzly side console, um, you know, is what it what it comes with. I like just a couple basic things on that, and and what that means as far as the numbers and stuff. Side console, I like that layout best. A lot of people you see with you know jet drives or tunnel holes or anything like that, they have a forward console that's a, typically a center console, and and they make that in the 18 footer. Um, I personally, I'm not a fan of it. I like the side console because it's basically the same as my bass boat layout. You know, I'm able to to lay, have rods on both sides of the boat. I'm able to move around in the boat eat more easily. Um, it, I don't know. I just I fished out of those center consoles. I've never been a fan of them. So all of the Luna boats I've ever had were all side consoles, and I don't see that ever changing. Just to be quite honest. Um, but uh 1754 so the boat's like 17 feet i think three inches or so um 17 2 17 3 somewhere in there 54 inch wide hull so corner to corner down on the bottom edge is what that uh that 54 number comes from the beam i think is around 80 inches i think it may be 76 78 is what the beam is at the widest part um so it has a has a really you know really wide platform up here to fish off of but this walkthrough, so for the purpose of this, I'm going to start at what is now the front deck, work my way around, and then uh, then we'll cover the back part of the boat um, from there back. So, we're, But we're going to start here inside and kind of go over the modifications, you know, any accessories, everything that I've put on this boat. We're going to go through all of those and kind of show you exactly how I've got this dude um, laid out for my, my kind of river fishing. So... Just inside, just a quick thing, you, you can see it's got this gray turf style flooring in it. Um, you know, it's got a little bit of cushion to it. It's a lot cooler than the than the Lunum. I can fish barefoot on this pretty much all, you know, all the time. It's uh, It doesn't get too hot even in the summer. We were just out there yesterday and it was 90 something degrees and it was way up in the afternoon before I really had to put my shoes back on due to, you know, the floor getting hot other than the latches. You gotta watch out for them things if you're a barefoot, uh, barefoot guy fishing. Uh, this box here, so I'll, I'll mention this. The front box that's on the boat is the only one that comes from the factory. So everything from just behind that front box back is added onto. Okay, so from right here back, all that's added on. The live well that comes on it is on the front of the console but it's only about a nine gallon plastic live well. And I will fish some tournaments out of this on occasion. Um, and, uh, and so that live well is really not quite as big as what I would like. So we, we literally just cut that off. I say we, Mike Watson cuts that off and then put in a much larger live well over there. That's what that small box is. The center box is a rod box. And that center box that uh, comes in the boat is open all the way. It's got a channel that runs all the way up to the nose of the boat. So that already being open, we when we add this deck on, that's the obvious easy place to put the rod box because then it's open all the way to the nose of the boat. I'm able to put eight foot rods in there without any trouble whatsoever. This box over here on the side is just a large dry storage tackle box. Um, that's what that one is. So now that leaves me with kind of the side space in this original front box, this factory front box. And so on the sides of that, I can, I can put stuff, of course, in the center. It's got the rods, you know, the tips of the rods running up through there. But I'm able to put some tools and life jackets, extra sunglasses, you know, different things in there along those sides. Coming on up towards the front, of course, got rod straps, TH Marine uh, rod straps on either side of the deck. That way, I, you know, I can put four, five, six rods both sides. Still plenty of room to stand between them. 
ideally i've only got four or five rods out and i'll typically put them all over on the driver's side of the boat um, but if i've got more out i've got room to spread them out come on up here and then on both sides of the front deck i've got a rail blaze a tackle caddy this thing is just man it's awesome to have right up here at the front of the boat right where i'm fishing i've got you know i've got pliers or cutters on one side i've got scissors on another i actually keep a rapless scale right in here pretty handy because Parker loves to weigh them, see exactly what they all weigh. I've got a spent pack of stickos that can go in the trash. And then just some extra loose baits um, laying down in there. But uh, just a, man, an excellent thing that goes right into that Versa track. It takes literally minutes, just a few minutes to install that. It's such an easy, easy deal to, uh, to put those tackle caddies on in that Versa track. It's an excellent system that runs all the way around the, uh, the edge of the boat on these tracker grizzlies as well as the bass trackers. Come on up here towards the front and uh, some electronic stuff I've got on this one. Of course, I've got a, a Humminbird Helix 10. I've got a Minn Kota Deckhand 30 anchor or Deckhand 40 actually is what that is with a 30 pound river anchor on it. But of course, a Minn, Minn Kota Ultrex trolling motor. That's a 36 volt, uh, 112 pound, just like what I've got on my Nitro. Um, uh, uh, I always make the joke if they had a 48 volt trolling motor, that's what I'd have on here. Um, people think that a 24 would be enough for, you know, a smaller aluminum boat like this. But man, the places I fish, heavy current, a lot of stuff, that, that 36, it does all it can do. And sometimes it's it's plenty and sometimes it'd be nice to have another 12 volts added to it. But uh, but yeah, that thing does does really well. And you may look at that and be like, man, that looks a little shorter than normal. Well, that's because it is. I actually, that's a 45 inch shaft trolling motor, but I cut about seven inches off of the shaft of this trolling motor for this particular boat because I'm always in shallow water. I'm never in big waves. And, you know, I could just raise the motor up and it would be fine. But then I'd be, you know, hitting the head when I'm sidearm casting and stuff because I'd have so much motor sticking up. So it's, it's literally just extra and uh, I take that head off and, and actually cut a little bit off of that. Then on this one, I've, I, any crappie fishing I do or anything, I end up putting, I had an extra mega live, so put one of those on the trolling motor, you know, real lightweight. I don't have a 360 on here, but uh, with that live, I'm able to, you know, able to use some live sonar on this boat as well. So that's, uh, that's kind of coming around the front, kind of showing you what we've got up here. That's a uh, we'll work on around, a lot of stuff going on on the back end of this boat back here. So let's go check some of that stuff out. One final thing up here on the front, on that Minn Kota Old Trex, the foot pedal, got that chill tracks on there from TH Marine. Just as much as I love to fish barefoot, it adds, adds a little bit of grip, but also keeps you from burning your foot on that, you know, on that Old Trex pedal. Being black, it definitely gets hot. I uh, mentioned from over there, another tackle caddy on this side. This one's got some scissors. You've got some stickos and extra rugby heads laying loose in here. Several rods strapped down there with the TH um, rod tamer strap. Then on the, so we'll start here kind of at the front of the console. One thing I've got there on the front is one of those TH Marine Tackle Titans, a little magnet deal. I've got a, got a DT6, I've got some VMC Moon Eye jig heads on here. That's just an excellent place, you know, with that magnet. That stuff that I'm using throughout the day, you know, if I just don't want it laying around in the floor, I don't want to be stepping on hooks. I can put those up there and not have to worry about, you know, uh, not have to worry about ever stepping on them or anything. All right, so here at the console, <clears throat> we've got, got quite a bit of stuff going on here. Um, start out here on the outside. I've got a USB powered Railblazer Starport mount. And this is the mount where I'm using, you know, to, to run that GoPro most of the time. Any of my YouTube videos, any filming that I do in this boat, I've always got a GoPro mounted right here. You're able to see the front deck of the boat really well. And uh, USB power, man, it, that thing just works works like a dream. Uh, you know, it's stable, it gets a great image, great spot on the boat. I've got different lengths of these of these camera booms from Railblazer. You know, if I wanna really get it up high and get a high angle shot, I can do that. But this one is probably the one I run the majority of the time. Uh, here at the console, one thing from the factory that I added, um, it may just look like it's, you know, a normal thing to have on the boat, but it, it doesn't come standard on the Grizzly, is that windshield. Not for the wind, I mean, I ain't doing but 30 miles an hour, but it's just a great place to be able to throw stuff, you know, to put sunscreen or whatever 
it's a great place to be able to put that stuff back in there behind that. Uh, Hummingbird Helix 10 here as well, uh, and this one does have side imaging. Um, you know, I'll, I will use that occasionally, especially if I'm crappie fishing. That uh, that definitely comes into play on on here. Uh, I don't have hydraulic steering on this because it is strictly a jet drive. I've never ran a prop on this um, this particular boat. I bought it as a jet, and you actually don't need hydraulic steering with the jet. There's really no wheel torque to speak of. Um, so just the just the standard steering that comes on this boat. Two TH Marine automatic. Uh, live well timers here. One's for the aerator, the you know the fill pump. One's for the recirculator to work that live well. Uh, is always an excellent um, excellent thing to add. The little factory switch panel, the nav light switch that works exactly how, how it is. The bilge pump does as well. The aerator side is just nothing on that. And then uh, of course got my jack plate switch over here for the Atlas jack plate. Six inch setback is what I've got on this one. I'm, no, it's actually four inch. Four inch setback is what I've got on there. Um, and then, uh, then I've got another rocker switch here that's actually for the fuel because I've got two fuel tanks in this boat is what we ended up doing with this, uh, this setup. And then I've got a little place under here to store some stuff. Right here on the side, I've got my push pole. You gotta have a push pole. A lot of it, I've got one in my bass boat all the time as well, but it's, it's particularly valuable um, in, in this boat to have a push pole, but I've got two Railblazer push pole holders right here. I actually didn't put them on starport mounts. I just hard screwed them down to the boat. So I just took them off of the, the starport that's on the back of those and just hard fastened those right to, you know, this little channel here on the boat. And it snaps in there. I mean, it snaps in it really tight. I've never had any issue with that coming loose, you know, trailering or anything. I mean, it stays, stays in there. I feel, I, I drove back and forth to Arkansas with it right there. Never worried about it at all. Uh, the seats and kind of what we've got going on here. So I mentioned two fuel tanks. This boat from the factory, this would be your back deck, okay? And then it would step down here about this much and then that's where your seats would sit. I, multiple reasons going on here. So for one, we add a fuel cell here is what we did. We added a 19 gallon fuel cell and we kept the nine gallon factory fuel cell. So I've got 28 gallons or so of fuel in this boat. My last one only had 18. He said, man, I mean, that's nearly 30 gallons of gas. How far, how far do you plan on running? I've, I've had times with that 18 gallons fishing a tournament, you know, on Douglas or Cherokee or something. That 18 gallons was just, I mean, just barely enough. It actually limited us in what we could do. There were other places, you know, I would have fished had we had more fuel. So to me, minimum, you know, optimum would be about 24 gallons, but the way it worked out, we were able to get 28 in this boat. Um, but part of doing that was raising this step, you know, where those seats sat down, raising that up, and then, uh, and then of course, put some seats up on top of that. These were just some extra seats I had out of my nitros, the rear fishing seat that were in those. Um, and that's, uh, so that's what we did there. Yeah, two f fuel tanks, which is the reason, reason for that. Back here on the rear end, You've got the workhorse of the whole deal, that Mercury jet drive, 65 horsepower motor. This boat being a 1754, it's rated for a 75 horse. If it had five more horsepower on that rating, I could step up to the 80, but that's what it's rated for. So the 65 is, uh, is what we get. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Atlas jack plate. Um, like I said, the four inch setback is what I've got on there. And that's just, man, that, that's a, it's a super strong plate. I could go with the micro, but that Atlas is just, man, it's so beefy. And for running it up high like I do all the time, I just felt a little better about going with that Atlas and uh, having, you know, having no concerns whatsoever. It's just a, just an excellent, excellent jack plate. Um, and here is actually another difference from my previous boats. I've always had my batteries, my trolling batteries up front and just one battery, just the crank battery back here in the rear box. But on this particular boat, given, you know, just kind of given the layout and everything, I ended up doing both batteries back here. But like I said, I said both. I only have two. I have one crank battery, 12 volt battery. I have one 36 volt battery. Of course, they're lithium pros, lithium batteries. And uh, I mean, man, it, that was just a, that was a pretty easy thing for me to decide to go with on this particular boat. So I've got one um, 40 amp hour 36 volt battery, runs the trolling motor, 
one, um, I think it's a 60, it might be an 80, uh, 80 amp hour crank battery is what I've got in there. And then all my electrical stuff's going on back here. I've got a master cutoff, got a master breaker, got some bus bars. Mike really has, he's really up to his game in the, uh, the wiring and electrical department um, on any of the boats that he does and rigs now. And then also that fuel switch to go from, you know, whichever fuel tank it is, the front tank or the rear tank, just a simple, simple switch there for that. A um, couple uh, thousand gallon hour bilge pumps back here in the back of this thing, of course, aerator pumps and everything else. But those, those two batteries, they were, I, I mounted them in there. It was pretty tight quarters to get those two, uh, to, two batteries down in there, but it ended up working out just fine so so coming on around here to kind of finish up with um, you can see the the pods those are not factory that are sticking out off the back of the boat we add those on for added flotation as well as a little bit faster you know hole shot but flotation is the big deal with those pods um, just helps to help as the as the boat's sitting fishing it's going to actually raise it a pretty significant amount I'm gonna say three or four inches um, less draft because of those pods compared to what it would have been without them. Uh, one, this is just a little thing that Mike makes as well to put your transducers on. And the, the deal with that is I can raise it up to where it's above the bottom. They won't get damaged, you know, from hitting rocks or anything. Or I can loosen this up, drop it down. And if I want to get a really good clear picture, you know, graph and side imaging and stuff, I can then do that. So it's, uh, it's particularly handy you know, if you're, if you're really wanting to be running side imaging and those type of things and get a good clear picture that way. Of course, up under here, um, you know, it's got the, uh, the intake for the live well and a couple the drain plugs and all that good stuff, as well as that tunnel hole. The tunnel is, is for me what really uh, just makes this boat extra special. And that's something that Mike puts into it. Um, you know, that, that, gets the, that gets the foot above the bottom of the boat. And without that, I would damage a lot of foot. I mean, that's just, just the way it is, running the, the kind of places where I go, that would be the first thing that hits the bottom. As it is now, the boat's gonna be the first thing that hits the bottom the vast majority of the time. If I dead center a rock and it goes right through that tunnel, I may clip the back end of the foot, but I'm never gonna hit the front, that leading edge of that foot on a rock because it's so high above the bottom of the boat. Even if you hit the back or you hit the grate or something like that, you may feel it bump it, but it's at an angle to where it just kind of rocks up over it and you keep going. Could you tear something up? Yeah, you definitely could, but it would really take the right hit on that foot at that point in time, you know, to mess something up. You're going to have really crunched someplace on this boat before you, before you end up tearing that foot up. So that's, uh, that's kind of my, my setup on it and why. It is, that, that tunnel's what makes the whole, the whole deal work. This boat would be pretty good standard with a jet drive on it. it. I mean, it would blow a lot of people's minds what it would do, but you put that tunnel in it and it really takes it to the next level. So um, that's, man, I think that pretty well covers what we've got here. Um, you know, a couple of questions I could see somebody asking on this setup would be, you know, just how does it perform? I mean, that, I think that's one of the first things people want to ask about a jet drive. For me with this setup, two people, I'm running 30, 31 miles an hour. That's about what I, I get, you know, top speed. Um, carrying three people, um, you know, that's going to drop a little bit, maybe 29, 28, 29 is, is around where that's going to be. But yeah, you're in that 30 mile an hour ballpark range. Um, with the tunnel, with everything set up, you know, that's that, that front deck and all that stuff that adds a fair amount of weight to it. We added quite a bit of fuel to it. You could probably really strip this thing down, just do the tunnel, just do the jack plate. And I, I'd guess you'd be in the 32, 34 mile an hour range, you know, would, would probably be where you're at. But I, I love having all that in there because it just makes this boat fish so, so well. Um, you know, I mean, I, I'm able to, leave all the tackle, all the rods, everything I'd ever possibly want. It just stays in this boat and it's ready to go anytime I come home and hook up to it. So yeah, that's on the performance. That's kind of where it's at. Handling wise, a big thing with this boat and why I like it so well, this thing has a seven degree dead rise to the hull. So it's got that little slight V to it. Well, when Mike cuts that tunnel in, that 
that little bit of dead rise is so good at channeling water to that tunnel. And, uh, and, and just that little bit of V in the hole, when you go to make a turn, it gives it just enough to where that boat will lean and then bite into those turns really well. Far and away the best handling jet drive boat that I've, I've ever driven myself uh, for an outboard jet like this and uh, you know that I've ever ridden in. I've, I've rode in some inboards that were pretty impressive, but for an outboard, man, I, I've not been in any that were you know that were as good as what this setup really does. So I, I love it, man. It's uh, it, it's so much fun. And the final the final question I guess people would ask for it was just how shallow will it run? I, I am extremely comfortable and confident in it. And five inches of water, I don't even bat an eye. Four inches of water, I'm like, okay, we need to be paying attention. Less than that, you know, depending on the size of the rock and the shape of the rock, is going to really determine, you know, just how much bottom contact you have. I've been in places where it was just flat, small gravel or sandy type stuff with three inches of water and you never really feel bottom contact. But if you're in like six inches of water and you've got, you know, big river slicks that are sticking up to two and a half or three inches, you're going to feel them a little bit, but you're really not going to hurt anything. So it, it really is, it really is mind blowing. If you, if you follow any of our stuff at all, you've, uh, you've seen me run through some pretty crazy stuff. So it's a lot of fun, man. I, I enjoy our time in this boat. Uh, enjoy taking the kids in it a lot and I uh, just love fishing those rivers. <laughs>